Okay, everybody, we're going to go over uh, the uh, rough setup of the controls. And uh, you probably see me set this down. I'm using my phone right now instead of my headset because apparently the batteries aren't charged up enough on it. But anyway, as you can see right here, what I've got is this is the STC 1000. This is just a very simple uh, temperature controller. And you can see up here it's uh, right there saying cool. You see that little light on? It's in the cool mode. So it's calling for cool based on the set point that I have. I don't know if I can show you how that is by just using one hand. I don't know. Uh, if not, I'll cover it in another video on how to set this up. But right now I've got it uh, where it actually uh, works uh, between 7 and 4 degrees Celsius. Now this only measures in Celsius, but you know it's all I could get being as cheap as it was. They do make some Fahrenheit ones, but they don't have the dual uh, relays. They don't have a they don't have a contact for cool and a contact for heat. Now, what we're wanting to do here is uh, basically mimic uh, pushing the button. Uh, this is the controller. It's not plugged in. This is the controller for the heater. They got this little three button type. And so you push this button here and hold it down for so many seconds. I think it's about like three to turn it on. And then to turn it off, you hold it down for about a second. So what we want to do is we want to uh, we want to fool this controller into thinking we're pushing that button. And we will need to do it with time delays. So uh, I've got these two time delays here. You can see they're not even powered on right now. One of the reasons is these, these time delays that I have here are 24 volt. This is 12, so I've got a little 12 volt power supply there, and I got my other bench supply, uh, supply over here set at 24 volts. What I'm doing is I'm powering from this right now down the this cable here, two wires into the back of this, that then jump contact. So it's just switching the 24 volts on and off, which and when I get uh, the 12 volts, one of these, it will just all be 12 volt. So right now you see it's off. Now, looking at the uh, settings for this, there was a couple of them that I thought uh, that I could use to do it. What, I, what you want it to do is you want it to, when it's given a signal or a power on, you want it to time for so many seconds, and then which basically closes the contacts and its relays, time for so many seconds and then release. We're going to basically short two wires together that are going to be put across uh, and on the circuit board in here across uh, the, where this is tied in because uh, this back pops off. <coughs> and we're going to do that. The other way we could do it is to do it with this which we'd have to mimic pushing the on and the off. So either one of that would work with this particular setup of two controllers. If we use one their outputs are going to be the same. They're just going to be different times. So if you look up here right now, I just kind of label that. I know it's upside down backwards, but that says four seconds, and that says two. So the whole idea here was initially to, uh, like I said, I think it's three seconds uh, to start it and one, and one to turn it off. I gave it a little cushion. Now using the trigger wire on these, I couldn't get it to do what I wanted it to do. So. I ended up using what's called a power on uh, delay for so long, then connect the relay for so long. So I believe that's a P21 on this particular time delay relay. Now you can use the kind that you just set the uh, time with a uh, little trim pot on them. You can use those, but the main thing is you need a time delay relay that when it's told the time it will close the relay contact hold it for three seconds one second whatever it is you need it to do and then it will release and you're going to use those contact closures to fool that controller so I'm going to go ahead and power this up and what you're going to notice is I think this fourth second one is uh, probably going to come on I think it's that one's going to come on yeah it is now it went through A1 now the B is the time for four seconds and now it's gone into 
uh, it's finish time and mode. The reason that that's tied to the cool. Okay, so the cool we want it to shut it off, and uh, you know, uh, so I, I'll, I'll probably have to readjust the times to get it right. But that would be to shut it off because it's in the cool mode. Now what I've got here is I've got a glass of ice water, and I'm gonna put uh, if I can get my thermal couple over here. I'm going to shove it down in that ice water. And we're going to watch this thing go down. And then that other relay should come on when we get down here to... There we go. You see it drop below 4 and turn back on. So that would be starting it for the heat. And then we remove the thermal couple out. And you'll see the, the uh, temperature warm up. When it gets to about 7 something, it's going to call for cool but it does what's called a one minute delay now what you're going to see is the cool light start flashing once we get above seven there we go and before long the cool uh, light will start flashing here there you go right there the cool lights flashing the, the flashing is it's in a delay this particular controller has what's called a compressor delay so going in the cool mode, it's wanting uh, the compressor to delay. Default's three minutes. The shortest you can set it is one minute. So it's going to flash for one minute, and then it's going to start. I can live with that delay. So once that one minute's over, then this timer is going to kick on. There it goes. The A is just how long did the delay before it starts the countdown, and the B is the countdown. There we go. We just told the uh, uh, heater to turn off and it, in which case at that point it will go into the cool down mode so like I said uh, with my camera here I probably can't show you what I'm going to do here uh, but I'm going to pop the case open it pops open real easy on this side there's a little spot there you can get a screwdriver and it pops open and then what I will do is I will go in and solder wires across where that button pushes and then have those wires come out along with these and uh, that's what we're going to use. Now what I'm going to end up doing is putting a plug on it. Uh, I don't have that in here right now but I'm going to put a little, uh, little electronics plug on there so I just have the wires come out and then I'll make a harness that will plug in I don't need a long set of wires there. So that's basically it right now. So I'm going to go over on this one. Uh, I will throw up a schematic on how I'm going to wire this together and make that available for you guys to look at. Till the next one, thanks. Go ahead and hit the like button, uh, which helps me out. Uh, subscribe if you want to keep uh, up with going on on this project, and uh, we'll see you in the next one. Well, I decided to go ahead and kind of carry on this a little bit. This is with it open. You can see that there's the displays, all the other stuff. There's the two, the three buttons. I want to mimic that button. So I'm going to pop this out. It just lifts out. Nothing screwed in there and stuff. Now, you'll see over here, this is the face and the buttons are just laying in there. So when you take one of these apart, you want to do it with it face down so those buttons don't fall out. And then the same thing when we go to put it back together, what we will do is uh, line it up in there. And uh, I believe if you see, uh, let me see if I can get my finger in there right, that little hole there and that little hole there they line up on these pins right here and here so we'll probably lay it back in there and slide the case on later so I'm gonna go ahead and pause a minute flip over and see if I can look at the back of this all right I got the wire soldered on there and right now I've got them going over here with my little test and there's my meter and that's sitting at about 2.190 mega ohms so that's hardly nothing on there I'm gonna push this button and we go down to 7 ohms, 0.7 ohms. So, so that's making across that circuit. Now what I'm going to do is try to get that to go out this way, bend these wires, go out there, go out the side here. I might go out the side. Man, I'm having a trouble with this wire right here. I'm going to have to resolder it on there again. All right, I'm not going. I don't know if you're going to be able to see what's going on with here because you know you get that flicker. But right now it's sitting at 15.6 degrees C. This one was calling for the cool to shut it off. 
this one is the timer for the heat. Now I've got this one set for a four second pulse and this one set for a two second pulse. I've got a glass of water there that I can stick the probe in. Now right now I've got the temperature controller running off of 12 volts. I've got these time delays running off 24 because I had these and so this is for testing. I will go ahead and, and get me some uh, 12 volt ones and then I'll run all this off 12 volt put it all up in there. So I soldered that wire. You can see where I got that wire coming out of the side of that controller and there's where I made where it just quick connects and to my little wiring harness and you'll see I got two wires in, four wires out that's so I'd have two to go to there. The blue and the yellow are the ones that go across the common and normally open contacts of that one. And the red and the black are going across the common and normally open contacts of this one. Uh, initially I'd set up the yellow wire in here and I'll show you that on the display as a trigger wire. We're not using it. All I'm doing is I'm turning the power on to these. They're doing a real quick countdown. Then they're doing their actual timing countdown each time. So right now this one had the power on it, that one didn't. So we're going to go ahead and drop this thermocouple into the ice water. And you're going to see, hopefully you can see that dropping quick. And we should get a start here in a minute. And we got a start. So it's, it's on the slow start, it's going to start and come on on. And it'll run until it comes back up to temperature. I'll look at what I've got for the temperature. You can see my uh, charger's kicked on showing that the glow plug is pulled on. Right now the charger's feeding the battery uh, but it, it's set to automatically charge so it's noticed that there's been a load put on the battery and it's kicked in. Uh, this should be bringing on some heat in a little bit. So all I gotta really do is set that and that to let you know is pretty good. It's at 0 0.1 degrees uh, centigrade and it's sitting in a glass of ice water so that shows you that this uh, temperature controller is pretty well calibrated uh, close enough for me like I said now when it goes to turn off this I'm gonna go ahead and let it fire up and then we're gonna go down to the cool down cycle with it and uh, uh, let it do a shutdown and I'll come back in the video when doing that I'm gonna go ahead and let it come on up and uh, start the heat. Okay, so we're up heating. I've got my uh, pulse set at three, so that'd be like about medium. With the thermostat, I can crank it on up and set the pulses at six, which is the highest it goes with this controller to let it come on and recover. Just so you'll know right here, if you can see it down here, between that mark and that mark right there is where it ran for 13 hours on uh, low. So it ran constantly for 13 hours right there. This is a 15 liter tank which is 3.9, so just under 4 gallons. I'm going to go ahead and top it off because we got some really cold weather coming and hopefully this will uh, at least keep it from freezing in here. I, you know, I really don't know if those will do anything. I got a couple tomatoes on it. So what I'm going to do now is go ahead and I'm going to pull this out and we're going to let it warm up. And we're going to see what happens here. Right now you also see it showing in the heat mode there. And like I said, when it goes into the cool mode, when it calls it for cool, you'll see that cool light flashing. It's going to go through a one minute delay because it has a comp compressor delay in this. I can't override it so I set it at the lowest amount. So what it'll do is even though it stops calling for heat, this is going to continue to run because it hasn't got the signal to shut off. It's going to wait until the cool comes on and then a minute later when that cool light goes on solid, it's going to send the signal to that to stop it. And that should work. So there's my thermostat. Now, you can do all of this if you buy an afterburner and you have a co co compatible controller. You can just hook this into the afterburner if you get that extra little kit for it. Uh, let's see, we're at 9 something, so I think it's around 10, somewhere around 10 as I told it to uh, come on, so there you go, yeah, right, right around 10 centigrade, and I may adjust that, but uh, that's where it's cut, so it's going through the one minute uh, compressor delay on the uh, timer, on the temperature controller, 
and uh, you can see right now it's saying 11.6 Celsius and so it's going to do that and then it's going to come over here and uh, it will turn this one on it'll go through its countdown uh, four seconds there it goes now it's going to go and there's its countdown it should shut this off I know you can't see that yeah it says off you can't see it with that because it doesn't really brighten the deal it's off she's powering down she's going down into cool mode so I would call this a success now I'm just going to leave this sitting here because we got a freezing deal I'm going to put something up over the top so I don't get any water down on it because uh, this plastic rains in here I do not have the regular greenhouse plastic with the anti whatever they call it, anti drip whatever on there uh, now when I do the bigger greenhouse we're going to double uh, layer it and inflate it because that will actually let this thing do better but I'm pleased this is working so I'm just going to cover these things up uh, with something I'll throw a box over them or a plastic piece of plastic part way over as long as it's not down on it and I just keep any uh, rain off of it it comes from raining on the inside of the plastic when it condenses up there anyway so there we go it does work plugged in there with these little short connectors here I'm gonna put a list of everything that I'm using uh, in the final version of this I may go ahead and start putting a list in this one here and then at least for the controls and uh, then as far as what do you want to do for a box or how you want to mount it whatever else uh, you can do that right now like I said it's going through cool down still running the fan in there but it is off so what I'll probably do is I'll set this to uh, 6 Hertz and uh, which is the full blast and I'll fill that up and when we get some weather we're supposed to have some 16 degree weather coming and so I'll probably run out of fuel over that period running it like that because I've only got single plastic but the whole idea is just to see what happens so anyway again I know I carried this on I want to thank everybody for watching please hit the like button if you want to see more uh, of this and how it goes and some more on this, the controls and everything that I set up for the greenhouse uh, and then when I just start building the new ground house or anything else I do around here on the farm uh, You want to see that? Uh, go ahead and subscribe hit the notification bell See you in the next one and thank everybody for watching